Hello, my name is Peter Parvitt and welcome to the New Brit Workshop. I was in the kitchen the other day, my wife was cooking some bacon and she reached into the drawer and brought out this little pair of tongs. Now they're made entirely of wood, no nails, no screws, and I made this oh, probably 35 years ago, it might even be 40, and she was using it to pick the bits of bacon out of the frying pan. So I thought, wow, I could make another one, show you how to do it. So I've done that, uh, here's one I made today as a practice go for the video and here's the one that we'll be making in this video. Very very simple. Now each pair of tongs are made from three pieces of wood. There's the two long pieces and then there's a wedge that goes in between and uh, here are the pieces that I've uh, constructed already uh, to do the job for this one we're making today. And there's the wedge in there and there are the two pieces and you can see how that's going to work. Now when it comes to cutting uh, the wedge, that's the piece that goes between the two flat bits, uh, you've got to take some care if you're using machinery, because it's quite a small piece. Uh, but I will show you in a minute a way of doing it by hand, but I'm doing mine with my capex. And I'm going to start with a piece of stock which is about the same width as the side pieces on the tongs, and I'm going to cut a piece off uh, which is probably about five centimetres long. I'm not going to measure it, it's just not necessary. So there's that short piece and I'm going to make a, a wedge by cutting across here at an angle. Now this is quite a small piece, you've got to work out some means of holding this really securely so your fingers are nowhere near. Now when it comes to the angle that you're going to cut the little wedge piece here. Uh, don't be too surprised if it needs to be quite a small angle. And I'm going to use an angle of three degrees. So I've moved my uh, saw bed round so it's now on three degrees, no more. Now technically you should cut one and a half degrees from one side and one and a half the other. Uh, but I'm not bothering because I'm not worried about this piece in the middle being uh, slightly not uh, symmetrical. So as it is, uh, this piece of wood is pretty small and one might not wish to get one's fingers as close as that to the saw blade. So what you can do is to set something up like this. I've got a piece of wood just here, uh, which helps to keep this end of this piece of wood high. I'm going to put this as close to my saw blade as I think is safe. I've adjusted my piece of wood underneath so it's about where I want it uh, to be for the cut. I'm going to take a, a clamp now, put that across here, and so that's now pressing down on there. That's exerting quite a considerable amount of force just here now because that's actually bent that piece of wood down. So I'm now ready to do my cut. And remember, with a cap, it's always stop at the end of the cut. So there's that wedge, and that's at three degrees, and I think that's perfectly adequate for what we're making today. And so you can uh, do this by hand in order to get the right degree of taper. Now, having got our three pieces of wood, I haven't bothered cutting the long pieces off uh, to length or anything like that at this stage. It's just not a good idea to do it. And so I'm going to now glue these three bits together, and this really is a simple job. Now I like to apply glue to all the surfaces because uh, technically the glue will absorb into the wood just a tiny bit. So let's glue on all those bits, and I'm going to bring them together now like so. Uh, the only key thing to do at this stage is to make sure your wedge is the right way round so that that's the wider end and this is the narrow end. And I find it's best to clamp it on a flat surface and you make sure everything is pushed down flat onto that surface as you put each clamp on. There's the first clamp. That seems to be perfectly okay. That's my clamping arrangement, fairly straightforward and simple. And as I said before, I'm not worried about these being the right length at the stage at all. 
and uh, as long as they're in the same plane underneath, everything's fine. So that's got to be left now for the glue to go off really well. Uh, technically, you should perhaps wait 24 hours for that, uh, but in reality, probably after about uh, two hours, you should be able to handle this and do sanding and stuff like that with no problem at all. So that glue's had plenty of time to go off now. So I'm going to remove these. I'm now going to trim uh, for length at the end here and then trim these for length and then do a little bit of finishing. When you come to trim for length of something like this, you've got to make sure it's in a stable condition. So I'm pushing these two hard together. So I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of sanding on here and then this will be finished. Now incidentally, if you've got a Traxor cutting station, you're doing gluing or painting, varnishing, whatever, uh, get a piece of plastic to put over the top to protect it. It uh, doesn't cost anything. It's very, very easy to keep things clean. Right, I'm going to do the sanding of this. Uh, just before I do that, I'm just going to uh, cut the corners off here so that I can round this end completely. And it's dead easy. You can do this by eye. I've got a little pull saw. These are cheap and cheerful uh, pull saws. They come from Screwfix here in the UK, made by Owen. And I absolutely love them, especially when it comes to uh, doing a bit of flush cutting where you keep the blade flat against the surface and trim something off. Right, so that's that ready to be sanded. And with these ends, which I've just trimmed, uh, I can now sand this into a curve. That was really easy. Super duper. And I'm just going to break, break the ends here as well. Well, that's it. That's now completely finished. So I'm going to give this one to a friend of mine and uh, we've got the original one that I made about uh, 35, maybe 40 years ago uh, here, uh, which is what reminded me about making this video. And I've got one which we're going to use in the garden. Sometimes you, things you want to pick up which you just don't really want to touch, uh, particularly if you've got uh, slugs or something. Anyway, there we go. I hope you've managed to make one of these. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.